Hey all guys, what is going on? I'm back, finally. Yet again, I, I keep saying I'm back. Keep disappearing and coming back. But here I am, the podcast. Yet again, it's been so long. And, yeah, I can't remember whether it's a, a podcast last. But anyway, thank you for joining me once again. I'm back, guys. Uh, a lot of big things have happened. Some stories to tell you. And let's get right into it after the intro. So, one, two, three. Bye. Like, it's all half-assed. Like, do one thing or do another. Don't flip-flop like this government keeps doing. And I've keep, kept saying that. And I don't know, nobody knows what to believe in or what rules to follow. Businesses are going under. Um, yeah, they're trying to save the economy, but technically they're making it worse or better. Who knows? But are, are, are lives that important to this government? No. Not really. Clearly the money is. Of, of course, we can't live if we don't make a living. It's obvious. I mean, me being at risk, you'd think I'd be happy like that everything, everything's... That there's more rules in place. No. The opposite, really. Um, lockdown was lockdown. This is just confusing. You know, we, we don't know what's going on. I don't think anybody does. And I've been to the pub a few times, and closing it at 10 don't make a difference. Because what's happening is everyone's going to the pub, and then when it hits 10 o'clock, everyone's leaving at the same time. Getting taxis, buses, whatever. So, surely in that time they're going to be in contact with, with a lot of people. Whereas if the pubs were open like normal, um, anyone would, could leave at any time. But now everyone's got to leave at 10. And everyone's making sure they stay till literally 10 because they can't stay out in the pubs any they are. I mean, I'm just getting drunk at home. Been doing that in lockdown. Not recently, but um, yeah. In proper lockdown, yeah. I, as bad as it was and difficult, I had more fun. Now it's just confusing. Like, the time since things opened, it's been more stress. Like, I've been to loads of restaurants and stuff and out probably more than some people in my situation. Or, and less than others. But yeah, I've been out a fair few times, it's just stressful. Like, and then you've got people being over the top about masks. You know, like, taking a drink of water, that oh, you've got to put your mask back on in between sips. What? Like, I've actually heard that from someone, so... Don't, don't get me started. I just... I don't, I don't know what rules to follow anymore. I, I mean, no one's going to the pub anyway. Because you've got to be, like, a group of six. Like, in my situation, anyway. Like, it's no fun. You know, so all we're doing is Zoom calls and... I'm playing online all the time. And, yeah, it's just... This year, not, like, the last few months, this year was like this. And maybe some of next year, the first half anyway. Like, is it, I don't know, is it better to be pessimistic or optimistic? It's, it's naive to be optimistic in some way. In life, I am optimistic. But with this, I'll be like, the more you say, oh, it'll be done soon, the longer it's going to go on, really. If you say, oh, it'll be done by Christmas. No, it won't. Unless we get a vaccine that works. I think Russia have got one. But be realistic. The longer you say, the more, well, the less upset you're going to be when you realise it's longer than you first thought. You know, I'm thinking, like, okay, maybe some point next year, halfway through the year at least, talking about Easter, it might be okay. It might be better, but COVID won't disappear just because there's a vaccine. It's not going to disappear. People are naive to think that. Like, so it's naive to be that optimistic that it'll be gone literally by the end of the year. Like, it strikes midnight, yeah, happy new year, it's gone. No, we wish. But no, if anyone said to you, we'd be in this position, you know, on New Year's Day, if anyone said this, you wouldn't believe it. Nobody would, it's like, unprecedented. That's a big word for me, you know. God, I used a big word, wow. I'm getting good at this, guys. Not Joe Rogan levels, but yeah. Getting there. So yeah, Boris is just an idiot. They all are like, yeah, okay. Some people praise him because like, okay, he's trying his best. 
But you saw other countries go through it. Italy, Spain, other countries. And what do you do? Fall in the same trap. And you're still looking like mugs. I don't get it. Like, I'm, I'm getting irate over this. There's other things I want to talk about. Um, so moving on. Gareth Bale. Once a Spurs legend, always a Spurs legend. You know, he's back. He's back at the lane. He's 31, he's not the kid he was before. He's grown up, he's won a lot of trophies though. Yeah, he's grown up. I heard someone say, well, I heard the Chelsea fans say that, like, he's not ambitious if he's coming back to Spurs. And what do you mean? He's 31. Like, he's won all there is to win. What, he's going to go to PSG, is he? Or another, another high club, like, on the, on the level of, like, Madrid. Well, you know, he's not going to. Because he's 31, he was prepared to go to China. But he came to Spurs instead. So, you know, he is ambitious. To try and win something with a club that hasn't won much is ambitious. So I don't know what that guy was on about. Um, but yeah, he's going to make such a difference. Because Kane makes a difference when he's on the pitch. And if Kane gets injured, which he will, Bale will be doing that job. But both of them together will be another level. And Ali, where does he fit in? I mean, I've seen the documentary, the Spurs documentary, which I'll get into. And in that, he just told he's lazy by Mourinho, with a few other swear words in there. But Deli Ali is lazy. We know this. He disappears and he comes and goes from games, you know. Like Mourinho said, are you Deli Ali or Deli Ali's brother? Okay. News update from the iPad, that's fine. It's disturbed my podcast. Um, yeah, Deli Ali, like, I don't know where he fits in at the moment. Even though he did play, it's, the rumours are rumours, though. At the moment, he's not leaving. Mourinho hasn't fallen out with him. I mean, he likes him, clearly, because he's kept him there. Otherwise, he would have sold him by now, if he didn't like him. Um, but I want to get onto that later, and Danny Rose. But yeah, Gareth is back. And it's a new season. Yeah, we lost the first game. But we're back. And, uh, yeah, it, it feels weird. Like, even though we lost the first game, we're, we're playing well. We're playing well. And um, speaking of that Tottenham documentary, it, you know, it was amazing. Like, Tom Hardy presenting it. But really, it was a documentary made by Spurs about Spurs. Like, from the inside, outside. And then you move on to the, uh, the whole Danny Rose situation. Like how rude, he was rude to Mourinho, basically. Just goes in there and goes, doesn't even say, how are you? He's like, what's the problem? Obviously, you can air your opinion that you're not playing well. That's fair enough. But be polite about it. I've been in the same situation, but I, wasn't, I haven't been rude about it. Uh, with teams in the past. But, you know, have some decency. Say what you want to say, but... So I respect him for that, but still, you know... Have some respect. I like Danny Rose, he's a legend, a Spurs legend, but maybe his time has come. Don't rate Ben Davis anymore. Regulon is a legend now. Another great signing. Um, because his documentary's done now, so we don't have to be looking into the, all these private situations that happened at Spurs, like the Ericsson saga. Um, we did want him to stay. At the time, people were saying, like, oh, he's not been good for two years anyway. And they were right. But I wouldn't go as far as to say he was, like, a traitor. I mean, for a while, I was, like, kind of angry. I was like, fine, we don't need you to go. We've got a cup-winning manager, a trophy Mourinho, you know. Trophy Mourinho. <laughs> not Jose. But, you know, so we don't need one player. Like, one player is one player. Who cares? Like, this is a team. Team effort to win the game. Teamwork makes a dream work. And honestly, the Mourinho speeches, maybe showing up for camera, but they're really inspiring, you know. All this about courage and being certain things on the pitch. Like he said, you have to be like a bastard on the pitch and all this. In other words, I won't use. But he's right, and it made me think about when I play. You know, I'm too nice. I'm too nice on the pitch. There's a lot of players who just flip a switch 
and then to turn into animals on the pitch. I have done that sometimes, but I'm still too nice, like, easily distracted. Um, but think about it in life. Like when you lose focus, what you got to do? Just literally breathe, because without breathing, there's no life. So if you, if you can do that, it will, it will put your mind, you know, it'll put your mind right, like, it'll help you focus. And, yeah, the things we're saying about football and about life make sense, like, courage, family, all these things, you know, honesty, all that. It, it, it makes a good documentary. And even people that aren't Spurs fans enjoyed it, I reckon. Well, obviously it's not their team. But I still watch the, um, the Sunderland one on Netflix and enjoyed it, but like, obviously it's not my team. This is another level because it's my team. So I really like, appreciate what you're saying. It resonated because when I play Padre football, we need that kind of energy on the pitch that it gives. And uh, I'm, let's just say, if I ever give a team talk, I've been captain in the past, but I didn't give a team talk as rubbish as Harry Kane's one. All he did was swear and say, let's go and win. Is that not obvious? <laughs> But the way he said Harry Kane is like an example to the other players. Mourinho took him aside in his office. He said, you know, you want to be on the level of Messi and Ronaldo. Got to keep, keep working, you know. Be an example to your teammates. Like Ronaldo is for him te his teammates. They all want to do better because of him. Because of him pushing them to be better, to be nearer his level. Which is the best. Not unlike Messi at the moment with Barcelona where, like, Everyone's leaving, all the players seem to be moving on. Messi wanted to, but he stayed now. And they're just not playing good. As good as he is individually, he's not leading the team. He's not leading by example at the moment. So we'll see. And then when it comes to the Premier League, I've, you know, a few predictions. Uh, seeing the si signings Chelsea made, annoyingly, they're probably going to be in top four somewhere. Hopefully not, but maybe with the Simons they need to gel. And then Liverpool, this might be their fellow year, they might not win it this year. I don't know, City, always a big contenders to win the title. Spurs will be somewhere in there, top four I reckon. Um, I'm not going to talk about the other North London club, not worth talking about. But yeah, probably around there too. United, a bit further down below the London clubs, I reckon. Well, there's, so there's like four teams fighting for third and fourth, basically. Then you've got Everton and Leicester, who are pretty dangerous, as we know about Everton already. <laughs> they beat us and put like five past West Brom or something. So yeah, football is crazy this year. And this documentary just got me back in the mood for watching football. Because lockdown kind of ruined that. And I remember when it first came back, after the proper lockdown, like in July or something, people went mad. It was like life had begun again. Back to reality. And it certainly feels like that now. Though the fixtures are later than they, all, than they normally are. No, all the fixtures. So the season's going to run later again. Which nobody minds, why well, don't mind. I love my football at the moment, loving the way Spurs are doing. And maybe we're not playing the most fancy football, but we get the job done. That's what Mourinho does. That is Mourinho, you know. Get the job done. Doesn't matter how, just get it done. It's the results that count, really. He is a serial winner. Or he has been. Um, and we'll see. But United fans were like, oh no, he's finished all this. And for them he was, like the way what he did there. He did good at the beginning and it just went downhill. The whole Pogba situation. So I just hope it doesn't happen with Dele Alli at Spurs. But yeah, we're strong. And we're only getting stronger. A few more signings. Hopefully. Heard rumours about another striker. Maybe another centre-back. How true they are, I don't know. Um, by this point we might have signed them or someone in those positions. We'll see.
But yeah, speaking of documentaries and Netflix and Amazon and yeah, on the on Netflix I've been watching the Social Dilemma, and that is really interesting about like what is on the other side of our screens, the people who are looking at what we're looking at on our phones, Facebook, Instagram, all this, the spying going on and the AI learning everything about us and these computers getting all this knowledge on us, what we like, what we don't like, literally what you scroll through on your phone and the addiction that Instagram and Facebook is, the scrolling down is like putting the handle on a you know, on a roulette thing, on a roulette table, or a slot machine, you know? It, it's that kind of addiction, that dopamine hit that they were talking about, and it's scary, like, the level of stuff they know about us, what sites you're on, everything, who you're talking to, what you're saying, what you believe in, what you don't, and it leads to propaganda and incorrect political opinions, and flat earth theories and a lot of miscommunication and misinformation which is the age we live in and especially in the last year been so much misinformation about covid about different things black lives matter you know so many twisted stories and a lot of anger jesus jesus stop phoning me See, see, I'm so popular, guys. Yeah, I'm popular. That, that is basically what that is. I'm probably going to edit, edit this bit out. <laughs> but yeah, so social media is just polluting our minds with misinformation. And the last year, there's been a lot of things that make people angry and sad and different things and you know it's confusing here like one minute we're clapping for carers rightly so next minute we're being told to grasp on our neighbors if they're with more than seven people or six people what has the world come to has the world gone mad that's probably what i want to name this podcast has the world gone mad and it has you know the forest fires in america california just and other parts, I think, are higher, um, or somewhere there. A lot of land being catching fire, burning. Ice caps are melting, you know. All, all this the, the crazy stuff, and nobody knows the truth about anything, really. There's facts and there's opinions that are getting twisted. And what's right and what's wrong. But yeah, it's been so stressful, all these Wi-Fi troubles I've had. So it added like an extra like two and a half weeks to my hiatus from YouTube, which I probably told you about already at some point. But yeah, so they sent out a, a technician or an engineer, whatever you call them, but it was only like a youth engineer or something, like one of the, one of the newly recu recruited engineers or whatever, like it wasn't a senior engineer. So he came and said he fixed the problem of our router um, but he didn't, and I thought, okay, why don't you just give us a new router? But the younger drivers, or the younger engineers, they don't keep spare routers in their vans. Only the senior engineers do. So after a week of trying to get back to them, phoning them, we got back to BT, and they sent out a specialist, a senior specialist, which they should have sent out in the first place, to do the problem, to fix the problem, you know, properly. But no, so they send out this older guy, he had a spare router, fitted a new router, done. But then, like two days ago, it, after like maybe a week and a half of the problem being solved, my laptop goes and decides it doesn't want to connect to the Wi-Fi anymore. So finally got that fixed. And that works now, so yesterday I uploaded another video so I feel like I'm back in the rhythm, kind of. But this has just messed up the whole thing. So what I want to say to you is, like, whenever you're in this kind of situation, nothing's going right, just have faith. Just, like, be... I, I know I said about the whole corona thing, 
to be optimistic is naive. But in life, it's not. You you got to believe you're gonna get. The phone rang again. As I was saying, like I know I was being pessimistic about the whole Corona thing, like when it's gonna end. But in life, you've got to be optimistic. You've got to believe you're gonna get somewhere and work towards it. Believe you're gonna, I don't know, make that team or get that job. And if you believe you can get there, you're gonna to work towards getting there, you know. Like Harry Kane, he believes he's on the level of Messi and Ronaldo. And he is an example to his teammates. Maybe he's not on that level yet, Ballon d'Or winning level. He's a great player, don't get me wrong. You know, and having Bale in that dressing room is going to elevate everyone even more. You're going to look at him and Kane and be like, okay, we've got to be like these guys. All the fringe players, though, trying to get in a starting 11. And, you know, it's all about hard work. And in that documentary, Mourinho really does appreciate hard work more than skill or anything. But like Alan Iverson says, practice, practice, practice. We're talking about practice, you know. And he was one of the best basketball players. Though he'd been through so much in his own life, he, as a basketball player, was amazing. On the pitch, yeah, on the court. Off the court, it was different. And I've been reading up on my basketball, really getting into basketball, playing a lot of 2K21, the NBA uh, game, if you like, the, ver the basketball version of FIFA. Um, and yeah, I'm really into it now. Starting to understand the positions and the rules. Of course, I've got DeMar DeRozan t-shirt of the San Antonio Spurs. Their, well, their jersey. And yeah, I'm just learning about a, new, a sport that I kind of knew about and I knew about Michael Jordan and obviously Kobe RIP and LeBron and all these famous names. But I never really knew the rules or anything. And the closest I got to watching basketball was watching Space Jam, the movie, probably. Or that other one with Samuel Jackson, about basketball. So it's like, I've always been there, but like, I'm, I'm football all the way. I've always liked football. Then I got into NFL, then NBA, caught my eye, and then playing the game, I'm starting to appreciate it, and know the strengths and weaknesses of teams and players. And yeah, of course, San Antonio Spurs, because I'm a Spurs fan, uh, in two senses of the word, uh, I, had, I had to support them. Why couldn't I? How couldn't I? And the jersey I got is sick as well. It's brilliant. And um, yeah, I'm getting interested in basketball now. And they are my team. <laughs> it should be, well, in terms of location, where my family out there are, I should be a Boston Celtics fan. But I just, I don't know. I don't like green. <laughs> Something about it. But yeah, it's really since since we lost Kobe that I really got into it more and started to really appreciate what a great person and a great basketball player he is, you know. And yeah, RIP basically. And from there, I just started to appreciate the sport a lot more, understanding the game and the points and what means what, basically. It's a bit easier to understand than NFL, American football, even though I'm a big fan of that too. Go Raiders, <laughs> the Las Vegas Raiders as they're known now. So, so yeah, I'm into a lot more sports than I used to be. It used to be literally just Formula One and football. Maybe a bit of tennis, but yeah, that's about it. <laughs> and nah, I'm definitely going to get a new game for sure. I'm waiting for the PS5 though, before I buy any games that are coming out soon. FIFA, of course, I already, already got that uh, pre ordered. <laughs> because who knows when the PS5 is going to be affordable for me. Everyone's like, oh no, you should get it straight away. But I can't afford that, really. Not yet, anyway. Not till I get about like 900 more of you subscribed. And then maybe we can talk about making money. But not yet.
Not just yet. But yeah, you've got to be optimistic about things. Going back to what I started this conversation about. And it is really conversa a one-way conversation. And make what you will of it. Don't take anything literally. Not, I mean, personally, like, because I might offend someone at some point. You know? And that's life. I mean, you can't just go around being scared to step on anyone's toes or anything. Like, you've got to be honest. And I, I try to be it, but the world isn't really the social media. There's so much misinformation that how can you believe what's real? You know? Wikipedia is not fact all the time. And everyone's taking sides. Like, people are uh, divided by stupid things and like things that we shouldn't be talking about anymore. You know, around racism, don't even get into that, like, it's difficult, I mean, life is not, like, not simple, it's just a great, everything's grey in life, basically. And, you know, I don't know, people are just getting crazy. They're just, in America, they're arming themselves for what, I don't know, but then, Attacking police is too far. Like, not every police officer is responsible for the ones that are getting away with murder and all that. It's a system, yeah. But not. But a lot of them have family too. They have, they're people. Everyone's... We're all people, aren't we? Everyone bleeds the same colour. You know, there's no enemy. There shouldn't be any enemies, but there is. That's human nature. We're all fighting each other. Uh, but now, in the last year, people are just literally at each other's throats. You know, you've got vaxxers, anti-vaxxers, uh, Democrat, Republican, Labour, Conservative. All over the world, things are going mad. People are taking sides. And no one can just be in the middle, can you? You can't just be on the fence. Because everyone's gone mad. And maybe I've gone mad too, I don't know. But it's just trying to stay sane. This year is not really possible. And the tendency to just scroll through Instagram and Facebook is a, is a huge problem. The, the risk of getting addicted to that, which I have been in the past. Now I just set a timer on my phone where after an hour of using them, using those apps, it gets blocked. And I have to type in my code or something. Just so I don't always use it. And I, it, my phone's on the desk now. I'm looking at it, thinking I want to use it. You know, that's the thing. It's like always that addiction, and they want you to go back. Like watching that social dilemma documentary. You know, they made it into like a little movie as well. There's like people behind the desk, looking at your every move on your phone, trying to find ways to keep you on it, to get you addicted, to get you hooked and seeing an advert, and manipulate you in some way. Because Facebook really like. Really, they can manipulate whole governments, whole people in elections to who they vote for. And I've seen it with the other documentary, The Great Hack, what WhatsApp did in terms of corruption when it comes to politics and stuff, and propaganda. It's a new propaganda. And how Russia used it to manipulate people too, and like all this political stuff that gets involved. So then when you look at a government here changing the rules every five minutes, flip-flopping on every decision, like, it all makes sense. And, you know, they don't care about the individual person. As a disabled person, I feel neglected in this time by the government. Uh, like, you know, save the NHS, all this. Um, we need to, of course. But them saying everyone leave at 10 doesn't, because you can be in the pub from 11am till literally 10pm, getting sloshed, in contact with other people and you're saying in that time you won't get covid but you will get it if you're out at midnight yeah the time doesn't make a difference to the virus it's still there i don't get it maybe it's going to reduce the peak times but then these businesses are going to go under and yeah we, we need we need money to survive a lot of people are going under business and there's our health to think about the people at risk like me that are we, are we being really thought about? I don't know. People that have 
not got medical treatment and uh, probably going to not live as long as a result, with, you know, with terminal illnesses and stuff. Think about that. And the health secretary, whatever his name is, I forget his name anyway, uh, he had to apologise to these people, people who couldn't get their, their treatments, you know, because the NHS was packed. And now there's too much scaremongering going on, too much fear, and yeah, we should understand that it's dangerous. And someone like me could die from getting corona, that's it. Uh, I face that fact every day, and it's scary, it's more scary at first. Uh, when things opened up, it was just as scary because the risk was there. People coming and going, and you know. Uh, when everyone was at home, I wasn't worried. My parents are at work risking it every day, wearing full PPE for me and for themselves, obviously. My brother's on, you know, not at work, he's on furlough because of me. Technically, I don't blame myself. I shouldn't, I respect um, what they're doing. That's fine, but, you know, there's got to be some, some uh, sanity somewhere in this world. And I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm the only one seeing this. But I don't think so, there's a lot of people in the same boat, feeling the same way. And I've spoken to a lot of friends, disabled and able, and everyone's got a different opinion. Some of the same people I know didn't even want a shield and all this, and I, well, I, I like my liberty too, guys, but to a certain extent, I don't want to catch a virus as a result. And yeah, that's, that, that's me being scared because of seeing on the news the exaggeration of everything. But it's realistic, no? And yeah, I'm supposed to be optimistic. I say I am, and I am. And if we're careful, We'll be fine, that's it. Just gotta be careful, gotta be aware. Gotta be, be you know, un understand the situation. Fear don't help anyone. It's not fear, it's just knowing what I know. That's it. I, I've been out quite a lot. I know people that, in my position, have been out a lot less. And it's fear, and that's, that's fair enough. Understandable, you know, you don't wanna risk your life unnecessarily. It's not like when you get hit by a bus, you know, you don't plan for that. But if you go out and you, you're risking it, like, like, without wearing a mask and all this, fine. Do what you want, but don't endanger other people. Don't put other people at risk. But then at the same time, I, some people have taken it too far, like, about the masks. You know, you can't go grass other people up all the time, that's not right. What are we? We're all snitches now. All Takeshi six nines running around, snitching on, on our neighbours. Oh, we didn't wear a mask at this point, blah, blah, blah. Just, everyone should follow, nobody follows the rules. That's why we're in the situation now. Because everyone's acting like, oh, nothing's going on. You know, yeah, people, are, the news is making us too scared for our own good. But at the same time, it's not as bad as they let on sometimes. It's still out there, you know, you can't avoid that. But just follow the rules, it's simple. A lot of people are not following them, or haven't been, or respecting them, that is. And here we are with this... So we've done it to ourselves, basically. And the amount of people that went on holiday, I, I didn't get to. I would have been one of those people, but I realise now that it would have been selfish and stupid to go on a holiday. The amount of people that did, and came back, had to be quarantined, they didn't get it, they were fine, they went back to work. But a lot of people weren't in that same boat. A lot of people lost out on their business and stuff. People who have their own businesses who went away, came back to realise they had to quarantine and they couldn't work for another two weeks. Whose fault is that? Your fault for going away. But still, the government for not being more clear with what they're saying. And yeah, we need our liberty, but they need to be more strict with some things. And there's so many people like, Oh, we need our liberty, all this, on both sides of politics, both, whatever you believe in, both sides, I don't know, those are, it's a grey area of politics, but both, everyone's saying, like, okay, we need our freedom, though, but do you want to die for your freedom? Like, unnecessarily? Do you want to endanger you? Because everyone's got someone they know that's at risk, grandparent, relative, brother, sister, someone. 
that is at risk in their family that they don't want to put in danger. So do you want someone you don't know endangering those people? No. It's simple as that. So we've just got to all not be stupid about this and not go mad like the government is. Boris, that clown. Whatever he's done, good or bad, yeah, he's, he's trying to hold it together. It's a new virus, but it's been around for nine months now. Is it Nothing should be new to you now. Taking you by surprise. Completely taking you by surprise. Trump saying, OK, yeah, by the summer it'll be gone because UV light kills it. No, it doesn't. It's just the fact that you're outdoors and away from people that stops it being as bad. But then again, look at that place in America, I think Arizona. There's more cases than anywhere. And it's the hottest place in America, almost. You know? So it doesn't, I don't know. Just don't watch too much news. Stay off Twitter, you know. Too much Instagram, Facebook is all right. In moderation, just know that everything you do on there is being monitored. And watch, and as long as you're not, yeah, I used to say as long as you're not a criminal or someone doing something bad, it's all right, but it's not all right. Because it's like someone coming in your house and going through your underwear drawer without you even letting them in. You know, someone breaking in while you're away, doing it, and then looking at your family photos, uh, going through your, I don't know, personal belongings, and knowing everything about you, when you know nothing about them, and what their end game is. Because social media is the only platform, the only business endeavour, where people are referred to as, what are we referred to? We're not the customers, we're the product because they're advertising to us and we're going to buy from these companies that we see the adverts of or buy into this theory or belief. And that's not right. It's not, it's not, uh, you know, it's not, definitely not um, an honest thing to do, but that's how it is. We're the product and, you know, it, it, it's inhumane, is what it is, but that's the world we live in, and we've got to change it somehow. Because it's like doomsday style situation. Like, think of Terminator, when the machines finally take over. That's not going to happen, but there are computers that have all our data and information, and know everything about us. So yeah, before I was distracted again by this camera turning off, I was saying about all this confusion in the world, you know, just literally take a deep breath, breathe in and a breathe out a few times. Do that and everything will come clearer. I, well, I don't know the answers to everyone's problems, but I just know that. Like, if you, like breathing is the most basic thing a human can do. And you go back to basics when it gets too complicated. That's what I do, do a bit of meditation, breathing in and out a few t breathing exercise. Simple. It it's what what gets me through the day, I guess. If not for listening to a lot of music, different types, depending on what mood I'm in. But yeah, and editing and talking to you guys and getting it all out there, because you can't just air everything on Facebook. But yeah, it makes me think like even YouTube is designed to be addictive, and it's extremely addictive. And you go through that rabbit hole of just searching video after video and you end up looking at cats doing backflips. Something weird. And yeah. That's the addiction of like the internet in general. If anything good comes bad, that that's simple. And there's a lot of good the internet does and a lot of bad. And we're seeing a lot of that at the moment. Like it keeps us all connected in this time, in this lockdown, like, I was thinking the other day, someone said, you know, imagine this situation 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you know, before internet, imagine that, how alone we would actually be. And in that way, thank God for the internet, but social media is just ruining it. And I'm on there to promote my videos and my channel, my YouTube persona, 
um, and I'm and I end up scrolling through there in the end, and I'm posting stuff for my channel. You know, that's what I like to use it for. Facebook to keep in touch with family, but Instagram is toxic. You look at the people so happy, and you're like, it it gets to you. Like jealousy is not a good thing to have, and Instagram just makes people jealous. I want to look like something they're not, be perfect when they're not. they don't understand that they maybe already are in their own way. They're uniquely you know, imperfect, perfectly imperfect, unique in their own way. Like, I realise that about myself. Like, you know, take the diss out of disability, basically. All these things, you know, see it as a negative when it could be a positive. And don't change anything, but you've got to be optimistic, you know. Like, what I make up for is being knowledgeable, I think. But I think, I don't know, my brother wouldn't agree that I'm that, that I'm anywhere knowledgeable, but just the way I approach things, I think, it's not always the best, but to be optimistic is good, I think. To believe there's always a possibility it'll get better. And the amount of people I speak to, friends, family, who don't see it that way, we are a bit more negative about things. About, you know, I've got cousins around the same age as me, not being happy about their age, like, Oh, we're getting old. You're not getting old. Life is long, you know. You are young and life is long, like Pink Floyd say. And there is time to kill today, all this. These lyrics that roll around in my head and keep me going, I guess. You just got to find something that keeps you rolling, you know. And I find it through, like, inspiring you guys and other people and my friends and family cheering them up when I can when I'm in the mood <laughs> if they're not cheering me up you know but most days I'm fine this year is different like can't put this year as a normal year so any negative feelings over this year this year it's normal you know we've all been there we're in difficult situations but to sit there moaning about it and sulking doesn't make it any better it doesn't change it and yeah while being happy and looking forward to the future doesn't change it either it makes it easier to deal with for me negativity doesn't get you anywhere and it's taken me years to learn that like still every time I catch myself and I tell myself off like in my own head like what are you doing it sounds like I've gone mad guys doesn't it but yeah, I will catch myself and be like, well, hold on, why are you acting like this? What is the reason behind this? And you get to the bottom of the situation, of the reason why you're acting a certain way. And then you realise, why am I being stupid? What's, what's the point of acting this way? It's not going to achieve anything. And social media just interferes with that, with that positive mindset sometimes. But if I don't, post, it's like, I'm not, I don't exist, I don't know. It's bad to think about that. And just try and exist as a human being, not on a fake social media platform where you're like this imaginary version that you wish to be, that you're actually not. And, you know, if you post that you're unhappy or going through some shit on, it, on socials, you're asking for attention. And if you're overly happy, you're showing off. So what do you do, you know, don't be obsessed with social media and the opinions people on there have on you. Because the day ones, the real friends, they respect you either way, whatever version of you you are on there, like, and those who know the real you. But just don't be a fake version of yourself. Because then when people get to know you, they'll be like, oh, I don't know. Well, some people, the real version of them is just uh, a waste of space. So maybe they need to be someone else. But the average person, like me and you, nah. The real version of us is better than the fake persona. Because it's real and it's honest. And it's raw. You know? There's no filter for life. It's just what it is. That's it. And if this year hasn't taught you anything, I don't know where you've been because... God, has it been like a, a year for learning, 
if any, for all the situations we've been in. Learning how to deal with yourself. And I said that at the beginning, like, most people cannot sit in a room for an hour and just be with themselves. Like, they'll be on their phone or something or just doing something, you know, net on Netflix or something. No, people can't just sit alone in the room with their own thoughts because half of the people just can't face themselves and don't be one of those people, like, you know, appreciate realism and being, like, unique. And what you see as negative could be a positive, you know? You've got to use what you've got, basically. If you've got lemons, make lemonade. <laughs> And I've had my rant, I've had my moan, but overall that's helped. So thank you for sitting there and listening, and thank you for your view and your time. Views, your views. <laughs> However long and boring this has been. Uh, but yeah, back to podcasting. And whether I get one view or ten, or a hundred, or a thousand, I don't care, I'm still doing it. Because someone will watch this, and it will help them, I know that. And if you're one of those people, thank you. I know you want to thank me, but thank you for being here. That's it. Gratitude. That's another thing. Like, I was going to stop now, but yeah, it just got me going again. You've got to be grateful for what you got. Like, this year, people have been so down. They're like, oh, this is bad, all this. Um, I want my freedom, all this. But appreciate what you have got. This year has been the time to stop and think and realise. I've got this, I've got that, I've achieved this. I'm doing this, let me stop and think. Never in history have people had a year to stop because life is so quick. Blink and you'll miss it. You know, you just gotta live in the moment. I've said it before, or try to. I know I look forward to the future a lot, but still, just live in the moment. Don't try and think on what's, go what's gonna or not gonna happen. Yeah, look, you can look forward to a future, but you can look back too, but don't look back with regret. Look back and think, yes, I've done that and I learned this and that. Don't look back and think, oh, I wish I did this, wish I did that. I catch myself doing that too much, and that is my problem sometimes. I'll be like, I should have done this, should have done that. But it's done. You learn from it and move on, and you learn to adapt when you're in that situation again, or a difficult time. Just. You, you learn to deal with it and just adapt. Just, I don't know, people forgot how to do that and as humans is what we do, we adapt. We find the challenge and we adapt and work around it. You've got a river, build a bridge and cross it. Is it that simple all the time? No, but I hope this has given you some sort of peace of mind. But I'm Louise 21 and this has been the 42nd podcast. It's felt like so many more, because I keep taking bloody breaks. But I'm back, and I'm going to be doing the podcast. You know, I'm going to be doing these a lot more often, let's just say. But I'm not going to say when, because I don't make false promises. But thank you guys. That is it for today on another podcast. Take it easy, guys. Peace. <laughs>